Well, hello, it's Beach Life Fest, uh, K-Rock in the house, but more importantly, forget about this Klein Alley thing, and let's focus on the Tegan and Sarah thing going on over here, huh? Hello, welcome. Thank you. You know, as a, a, a very, very um, active lesbian, I just wanted to say wow. that I am... <laughs> not an active <laughs> lesbian. I, not, I don't active. know. I, I, let's dig into that, because I heard the word wife earlier, and I'm pretty sure that means there's probably not a ton of activity. <laughs> wow. Well, She's there is an a active lesbian. stereotype called lesbian bed death, yeah. which um, can happen. It can yeah. affect some of us. But um, no, I'm 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 physically active. <laughs> Wow. This um, interview is really making me uncomfortable. It's really good. Me too. It's going me too. As a straight person, I feel, <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. I'm yeah. newly out as straight. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you know what? Way. Honestly, when you're this many albums into your career, you have to shake it up. Yeah. And like we already <laughs> conquered queer yeah. pop right. music, so now we're going to conquer we, straight We drew pop straws music. before this album came out, and I was like, one of us is going to be straight this album cycle, and it's me. Oh. It's Welcome to your future, ladies, yeah. huh? <laughs> go back, Yummy. go back. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that we've seen you many times, and we love you so much. Much, and so That's meeting so you is definitely like a bucket list thing. That's so but nice. I, every show that I've been to, there are people who are dressed exactly like me that are just ex- as excited to see you. And I wanted to know just right off the bat, has anybody offered to marry you just right after meeting you? Because I think you probably get more lesbian love letters than anybody. We definitely have been proposed to. There's definitely... Um there's like a slice of the fandom that's pretty intense about us, but I like to think we're more like everybody's best friend, and we try not to. If there's something about being in a band with your sister, you try to like play down the uh, sexual, you know, like so. Yeah, so most people are just proposing at our show, not proposing to us. Ah. We but like you, to try to keep that the line. But you yeah. say you play it down, but you guys, true or false, you go to couples therapy together. We do. That's that is technically true. <laughs> that's yeah. technically true. That's, that's technically wild. True. Yeah. It's, I'd like to think of it more like it's constructive communication therapy with a specialist who deals with relationships. <laughs> do either of you do the thing I tried to do when I went to couples therapy where you try to pay the therapist after the session to say you're right and the other one's wrong? <laughs> we didn't need to. We had a really amazing, I have to say, all joking aside, we had an amazing woman who came in and helped us really like restructure our business and really learn how to communicate. I mean, ultimately, most marriages fail because people can't communicate with each other. Absolutely. And, and I think the longevity of our band like 23 years it's it's all because we keep going to therapy and we keep learning how to communicate like music's our child we got to take care of the child also financially there's not another option for us right now so (laughs) if i could find another occupation without tegan i might do it i might Uh morning morning radio radio is a bustling career yeah Yeah. Yeah. seems like it's doing (laughs) great sarah's straight and now she's um (laughs) i'm a radio dj she's a wacky (laughs) radio radio. this is a a straight radio dj i think i think it's hot hot. this is sarah shark in the morning on (laughs) k-rock you know my uh, dad is a twin and he never really got along with his brother they're not super close you two have been pretty open about how you've had your times coming together and you've also had your times that are rocky um talk about a little bit about the the memoir and kind of how you uh you know navigated those ins and outs and what how you wanted to talk about it and then now it's a show which is even better and I, i would hope that has brought you together you know when we decided to write the memoir we wanted to focus specifically on the origin of our band. So in high school, we started our band. We were not called Tegan and Sarah. We were called Sarah and Tegan. It was a highlight for me are during re- that time. Are you reading the memoir to them um, right now? I am, yes. Great. So page one, it opens with, uh, no. But when we decided to write the memoir, you know, I was, uh, one of the things that I was really struck by when we went back and started reading through like, you know, our diaries or talking to friends about that time, sort of reconstructing that time, that period of time in our life. I was really amazed by how um, move, moving it was to remember how close we were. And, and I don't mean like we're close. We spent a lot of time together. But I mean, we were really tight, you know, back then. I mean, we were, we were in the so- same social circle. We were playing in a band. And yet there was this profound secret that I certainly was keeping from Tegan, which was that I was gay and that I was having a secret relationship with a girl that we were friends with. And, you know, I think on the surface level that has been sort of almost anecdotal over the years, like, oh, I kept a secret from Tegan. But when I went back and really looked at that, that was a huge, huge secret to keep from the person who I was ultimately the closest to. And at some point I realized Tegan was also gay, but I was like, that was devastating to me, like that she was also gay. Cause I was really concerned about what, what was our, what were our lives going to look like? How were we going to manage in the world? This was the 1990s, you know, it didn't look like, great to be gay and um, so I think you know the show and the book 
have have brought us closer. I think it's made me feel really proud of what we overcame. And also, you know, like that we've been able to keep this band together through some of the most challenging experiences in our life. And, uh, and I think come out on the other side a lot stronger. What's interesting is that as I got here today, I heard uh, the band that was on stage, which I believe was Airborne Toxic, event, yelling out, oh, we saw Tegan and Sarah, we love you, hi. <laughs> and then earlier this morning uh, in our studio at K-Rock was Billy Corgan. And Billy Corgan, when we told him about the festival, because we sat with him on this exact couch last year here, he said, who's playing? We mentioned all the bands. He goes, oh, Tegan and Sarah, I, I love Tegan and Sarah. They, they have a great story about one of my songs. Ask him about it. <laughs> so it's just like, seems like all the other artists are uh, big fans as well. You're getting a lot of love in the community. It's kind of the coolest thing ever to be in a band, and especially during this age, because you can actually start to meet your idols. You can meet other bands. You can like communicate, create community, reach out, offer support. It's been such an amazing few years because of that. Like the first part of our career was really hard. It was impossible to like get to know people. We didn't really have any musician friends. and. It's been kind of a banner year for us. We met Ani DeFranco, we met Billy Corgan, we, and we got to have these really amazing moments where we were like, got to thank them for being such an influence on us. When Sarah and I were 16, we slept in a parking lot in Calgary where we grew up to get tickets to go see Smashing Pumpkins. Wow. And we wept and you know rocked out through the whole concert. And you know near the end, after they'd played all the big radio hits, a bunch of people left You know this arena show. And Billy went on this whole rant, you know, basically, you know, saying like, the people who are still left here, you're the fans and you'll be here. You'll be here with us. You were here in the beginning and you'll be with us throughout everything. And you know, like you guys are the real fans. And that really impacted Sarah and I. Like when we started our band, it was for us about community and longevity. We wanted a career. Never, never been chasing hits, never been chasing popularity. For us, it's all about how can we be a band forever? And that was really, those the two people who influenced us the most in that regard were Ani DeFranco and Billy Corgan. Well, wow. Billy Corgan was mentioning, because he performed today live for us acoustically, That's and he so said cool. that that song specifically meant a lot to you. And he said, he uh, before he played it, he said this was, he was like, I'm doing this for Tegan and Sarah. Oh my God. That's so great. It's like, this like <laughs> over and over and over again, it's just like us getting this dream. Like at the 16 year old us would not believe <laughs> I would that. die. I would have died. I mean, I mean, four-year-old us is like, ah! <laughs> yeah. It, th th that song truly changed, it changed my life. I mean, when I heard it, I was in, I was in grade seven, and a cute boy, a year older than us, gave me Siamese Dream, and he said to listen to the song today. And I remember thinking, I, I felt like I had traveled to another planet. I remember thinking, like, this sounds different. And I felt like it was the first time that I really... My parents loved music, our grandparents loved music, big music family, but I was like, this is mine. This is what I discovered this. This is yeah. for me. And I, you know, I, we said when we talked with Billy a few months ago, look, I knew he was like a straight man and he was like, you know, older. And I mean, in some ways, what could I even have in common with him? You know, I was like a closeted 13 year old girl. I felt like Billy was the only thing that made sense to huh. me. I just was like, he feels like an outsider. I feel like an outsider. That song changed my life. That band changed my life. And the fact that you guys are probably having that impact on people, and you don't know that, and you may not know that until they come in, run into you 20 years later, which yeah. is kind of a cool thing. It's the yeah. power of music. Thank you so much for spending some time with K-Rock. Uh, of course, I know you got a, a big set wait, to wait, do one tonight. One question. But this is the final question. <laughs> Allie's going to ask you to marry her. Spoiler what alert. Will we go. you both be a couple with me? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what is a, a lesbian stereotype that you love, that you own, and one that you hate? Because I, uh, for me. Yeah, tell us yours. I love hiking so very much. Oh, wow. I love that's a lesbian thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking up hills Just, is for lesbians. It's for us. It's a hard I'm, life. I'm a know? fan. The one that I hate is the one that people believe that women are gay because they haven't met the right guy yet. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, now well, you're that's turned. a fact, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, that yeah. one's true. No, that's we, not true. we all know that Sarah one. Sarah finally Mr. figured Mr. it out. Mr. Wright's out there, you guys. Uh, yeah. Don't Keep let, on looking. There don't go. give up. Right. Don't give up. I think that the stereotype that I really love is that like for a lot of us it just means that you get like you have this person you get to share all your clothes with <laughs> and that, that is true plus I get to share Sarah's wardrobe so oh. I have like oh, man. so many clothes it's like kind of the best and then like I constantly just swap all my clothes I just give my clothes out to all my queer friends so that's kind of like a stereotype I love about us it's true I think the worst one honestly it's still in that realm I think for sure it's it's this idea that sexuality is something to be changed fought moved rewritten. Yeah. I, I just think there are so many other things we should be worrying about on the planet. I think the things we should probably be worrying most about are probably like, I don't know, climate change and, you know, gun reform. But I, you know, the fact that we're super concerned about trying to figure out how to get lesbians to find the right dick. It does seem, seems like a, a waste of our resources. Yes, yeah, I would agree with that. 
I mean, okay, the stereotype I love is that all lesbians, like, know each other or, like, no matter how many, like, if you break up, you're still going to stay friends with each other. That, that does, is that's true. true. That's, that's actually that's a very true. true thing. And all lesbians are, like, one degree away from each that's other. That's also it's true. It's very, very hard to, it's, there's very few lesbians. And then, um, and then the negative one. Oh, God. I mean, I don't know. I don't even think about that anymore. I just think it's such a gift. I think at some point I realized that being gay feels like this, like, I feel so lucky so to be gay. Right. And I, like, love girls so much. And yeah. I love being a girl. So I um, I don't even think about the negative stuff anymore. Because I'm like, if the negative stuff just keeps pe gross people away from me, then, like, let them believe it. <laughs> Another plus for me is I get to make lesbian jokes. I yeah. love lesbian yeah. jokes. Yeah. yeah. And so I love jealous. how you I know. You're so uh, mad. Yeah. I love it's a great. softball one, guys. Can I do it? No? All right. Take it to the best. Take it Sarah here on K Rock here at Beach Life. Thanks for hanging out, and we can't wait to watch your set later. Thanks, Thanks for, having, for us. having us.